Okay, so we're gonna make this part in FreeCAD and the drawing up here. Here's what the final model will look like. And you can see this is actually all based on just this one sketch. If I go and expand all of these, it's just the one sketch. And it's just multiple extrusions. So let me make a new part here. I'll make sure I'm in millimeters. And I'm just going to create my sketch on the top plane, the XZ plane. So I'm going to make three circles here. I'm going to make two circles here. And then I'll kind of fill in this line, this line, and then, you know, these other lines here. And then I'll do this offset line as well. And that should be pretty much all I need. So. Let's move this off to the side so I can look at it. I'm going to type G and then C for circle. And just click and make all of those. This one just needs to be somewhere off in space. I'm not adding dimensions yet. So now I will hit this key over here, constrain arc or circle. This one I know needs to be 25 times 2. This one should be 34 through. This largest one is 55 diameter. And then we have 42 and 26. And I got all of these. There's the 42, there's the 26. The 55 is over here. And then we have the R25 and 34. So we got all of those now. And I actually just realized these were all, oops, I was making all of these construction. I don't want that up here. If you toggle this, I was making construction geometry that's blue. Anyways, I'm going to use the polyline tool up here. And I'm just going to, once again, just kind of sketch my general shape. I'm going to use two separate lines here. Um, I guess you don't have to do it that way, but that's just what I'm going to do here. Just for the sake of dimensioning. I'm going to click on these two. Um, you can click on the line in the arc and then tangent, T for tangent. Um, I prefer to do the endpoint and then the arc and make that tangent because otherwise, let's say this wasn't coincident and sometimes you lose constraints in FreeCAD. So if those two are tangent, you know, sometimes it might be, it looks like it's on that line and it's tangent, but it's actually not. And if I tried to extrude that after the fact, it is, you can see here, there is not a profile in this area. It's not shaded in. That's because it's not actually completely tangent. So it's always, I think, best practice for now to select the point and then the curve. Tangent there. And let's see, we have an angle, 25 degrees. Got put way over here. And that shortcut for angle is KA. And then we have 131 millimeters got over here 43 millimeters. Now what else are we missing? We are missing here to here should be 94. I can drag that over here to kind of match our drawing. And we are not fully constrained but I have a couple more things to add so I'm going to once again do a polyline and you can make make sure that you see this um, vertical constraint is here. So that means that when I click it is going to automatically add that vertical, vertical constraint. And you can see it right there. And same with the horizontal. So I'll click there and then click on there. And I'm going to let's see that dim dimension needs to be 8 millimeters. And I'll add one down here as well. 
0.8 millimeters. Great, and then from here to here, we know that should be 50. And we are fully constrained. And I believe we are all set to exit the sketch and not need to touch it again. So I'm going to close out of there. And now let me go back. Let's go back to our drawing and formulate a plan here. So I'm seeing this main shape here. That is a dimension of 11. So I think I'm just going to start off with that. So let's see. Right now I do have basically this circle defined because I didn't trim anything off. So I will also need to select this area. So I'm going to pad that. Type in 11. OK, that. Now you can you can expand this, and I'm going to um, you can show the sketch. I usually don't. I just click on the sketch, and then all the profiles show back up. So let's say next I want to do this boss here, this circular boss, and let me be smart about this here, so I know I'll kind of look at this section view here. So I know it's 25 millimeters tall. But then I also have this 42 diameter. Well, I'm going to extrude that up to there as well. So click this guy. 25. OK. Click on my sketch again. Click on this profile. Pad that. So that should be 25 minus, let's see minus 6 right there. So it's going to be 19. 25 minus 6. OK. And since I'm here, why don't I just do this now? So what I can do is, because I need to add in this countersink feature, I'm just going to click on that face and then basically start the countersink from right there sort of from this plane right there. So I will tell it this um, this main diameter and then um, the di diameter of the actual hole. So let's see what that looks like. I can click on this face and then I can click over here on the hole feature and I will need to do some configuring in here. So diameter of the hole, you know that is 26. You know the hole depth, um, I can just say through all. For the hole type, we know that is a countersink. And then the diameter should be 42. And that should be everything to define it. I'm going to make a section view. The shortcut is VC. So that looks uh, about right to me. So, okay, I'm going to close out of there. I don't need to save this view. I can delete that. Anyways, let's proceed here. Let me show this sketch again. And I think now I will work on doing this, this whole wall over here, because that all is going to be at the same height. So I'll rotate a bit higher up to the top view. And I'm just going to start selecting these profiles. And I will say, you can click on Pad first. I'll click on the sketch, OK. And then make sure to click on Profile so that it's kind of flashing back and forth. And now you can just go and click on every profile that you want, just like any other CAD program, really, that has, you know, multiple profiles and contours.
So you can do it that way, or you can select all of them ahead of time and then click Pad. It does the exact same thing. I know this dimension should be 33. 33, okay. Now there is this 45 degree chamfer on there. You can add it as a chamfer feature. Uh, I think I'm actually just gonna add it as a draft feature because I know that is 45 degrees and I know it's all the way through. So I can okay that and I'll show you the other way. So you can click on chamfer and I know this dimension is actually not given. So I'll need to do 33 minus 11, which will be 22. And something that you will notice here, if I type 22, it's gonna say recompute failed. And basically the reason is that it's trying to make, FreeCAD is expecting to make a new face here while this face and this face still exist. However, a chamfer of 22 is essentially deleting this face. So if you want to do a chamfer, you kind of have to cheese it and you have to say 21.99. And then if you zoom way in, there's actually still this face. So that's why I didn't want to add it as a chamfer. I just wanted to click on this, say draft, type in 45 and okay that. I think it's a cleaner way of doing that and I think it's appropriate given the fact that we are in fact just given a 45 degree angle. It's not really listed as a chamfer. I don't know if you'd even call that a chamfer in this case. Anyways, looks like the last thing up is just these radii. So there's two here and then another here. So I will click this. I'm going to hold the control key and select all of these. I'll type in nine, enter that, okay that. Now I believe that should cover everything in our model here. Now let's go to the material. That is 1060 aluminum alloy, 2700 kilograms per, per meter cubed. And then we need this to be in grams. So I opened up my mass properties. I have a link in the description for how to get that. Click on the body because you want the entire body. And now make sure that I have grams and then aluminum selected. And then here's my mass, 467.1 grams. So that should be my final answer. And let me know if you have any questions. I hope this helped.